Remember that OPEC agreement to curb production? It's suddenly got a whole lot more wobbly. There's price action for you, but make no mistake, prices were down, down, down overnight. North Sea Brent was off some 1% to 49.47 a barrel. You can see the marginal took higher since, and uh, Nymex Light Sweet was off half of 1%. Is that the end of the bloodletting, or is there more in store? Pete McGuire, live at xm.com via our Sydney CBD studio. Pete, welcome to you. The Qataris in trouble, uh, maybe of their own making, uh, with it a spillover to their national carrier, Qatar Airways, but more broadly, energy detente now looks doubtful, yes or no? I think doubtful, Carson, and good afternoon. You know, there's so many different ingredients to this mix. No doubt the Qataris and, of course, where the Saudis play Egypt and the other Arab nations, the other heav heavyweights. But more importantly, I think what Novak said, uh, which is the Russian oil minister, that if he didn't see those production cuts, Carson, they're down about 8 or 9% since OPEC on the Thursday, the 25th. He believes he could have seen a 50% fall. So that gives you some idea what they're, you know, rallying about and what they're trying to achieve. How problematic is it even now for the Kingdom's hold on power that they would be denied airspace to therefore get flights up and away to the likes of North Africa, key routes, even the shuttle service uh, that was running to, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia 14 times a day, all of that sort of thing. I mean, with it comes much needed Revenue, revenue streams. Well, exactly right, but more input, yes, and, mm. and they've taken on board. I mean, it's going to greatly impact all forms of travel. Mm. You can't take your eye off the target either that um, Qatar generates or produces and exports about a third of the world's LNG. So that's greatly dependent. You know, the U UAE needs that as far as air conditioning and so on. So mm. as that rolls forward, it's going to be very interesting the context of that whole situation over the coming weeks. I think it's mm. going to be very, very fascinating how it plays in. So to paraphrase, they could well turn the lights out on their neighbours. Yeah, well turn the lights out. It'd be nice to turn them out at about 48 degrees. It gets a bit warm over there in summer. <laughs> That's true, although they're not white nights, are they? They do have some shut-eye. Uh, but if you wanted to stay up late and work, uh, you might be even denied that privilege. They literally turn off the taps on that on that score. Just go beyond uh, the LNG piece to uh, even the softs at this point in time. What, what are you seeing? Well, I see sugar. You know, what's interesting, you've got Wilbur Ross um, talking as far as Donald Trump's NAFTA plans with Mexico and, of course, rolling across to Canada. He's talking about, you know, what's going on there, you know, fructose and fruit sugars and so on, the exporting, and then you've got the sugar producers out of Mexico. Mm. So there's a bit of concern there at the moment. That'll be interesting how that plays over the next coming weeks. Wilbur Ross believes that he'll get it sorted and there shouldn't be too many problems, but the great unknown, of course, is what does President Trump do and how, uh, how much, uh, I mm. suppose, lubrication is he prepared to apply to NAFTA? And Wilbur Ross is not exactly flavour of the month in the White House, is he? Unlike Rex Tillerson. Well, that's true, I mean, you know, but they're, they're both, you know, very independently wealthy men, but more importantly, I think that they can do pretty much... Their, their style of business is entrepreneurial, and I don't know how that's washing across the fabric as far as, you know, the yeah. White House. Yeah. OK, Pete, we will talk to you soon. Thank you, as always. Thank you, Carson. XM.com, Pete Maguire.